the last time you rode a bike? I was a kid the last time I rode a bike. It was the banana seat, you know, streamers on the handles. That's how long, <laughs> that's how long it's been. And, and do you have a general age or how old you were when that was? And, and kind of who were you at that as a kid when you were, when you were riding that bike? Like, and that kid, that kid ever oh, see you? You know what? That's so not true. Okay. We, we need to oh, scratch shoot. that. Because I think you're... Because I was on a bike homeless. Yeah. So the last, last time I've been on a bike was when I was on the streets dealing in my homeless state. Life didn't hit hard for me until I was 37. I did everything right. I went to college. I had straight A's. I had a career, the perfect family, and life happened, right? That magically beautiful disaster recipe that happened. I had a stint of surgeries and uh, I was on prescription medication of opiates for a year and a half and the medication just kept increasing. And it got to the point where I could not function without the medication. I couldn't go through the five day withdrawal. In your mind and in your body, you literally feel like you will die if you don't get out of this withdrawal. It is a physical hell. You will do anything to not feel that. When the doctors found out, I was completely severed off of that with no taper. And I started paying for the medication and it came down to $80 a pill or a $10 bag of heroin. It was over. I was on the streets. Christmas would go, the next Christmas would go. You know, you've got a tarp around you just to stave off the snow. Two years, that's all I thought about. I can't be sick. I was begging for death at that point, literally begging God to take my life because I could not do it anymore. I was so broken. There was no way out. When you look at this picture, you know that Describe me like kind of what you're, you know, you think when you look at that picture, what do you see? I can just see the complete despair. I remember hearing the sound of the camera. The only thing that went through my mind was, if you don't do something different, this is the last image your children are gonna have of you. Three days later, I was arrested and went into treatment. When somebody in recovery shared their story with me, showed me that it can be done, that we can recover, that's what instilled the hope back into me. I was speaking to another one of the counselors and she pulled me in her office and she sat me down and she said, you need to be more authentic. And I was spinning on that. Like, what do you mean I'm not authentic, right? What do you mean? And that's the moment that I realized I literally didn't know who I was. We're raised in a society that tells you that this is what success is. You go through the motions and that's exactly what I did. And I did it dang well. I could tell you what I could do. I could tell you what I could achieve. I could tell you how good I could do it. But I couldn't look you in the face and tell you what was in the worth of my soul. And that, that's when everything changed for me. That was the moment that I really had to challenge all of my thinking. Opposite of addiction is connection. If you don't find your purpose in your recovery, if you don't find that connection and that support of people who've lived that same struggle as you, you will fall every time. Opioid addiction is a growing problem across the country and also here in Utah. Two brothers and pro cyclists who are combining their love of riding a bike with rehab for those battling addiction. Cullen and Griffin Easter host community bike rides every Saturday morning and they want you to join in on the fun. Opie Cure is something special. To be able to show up and 
and they're able to read you and be able to understand you is powerful. You don't know who's gonna need that connection that week. Sometimes it's gonna be for you, sometimes it's gonna be for somebody else in the group. Having community to connect to that's outside of medication and therapy that offers this alternate avenue and this support and this connection is so important. The research we're doing is super unique. We study structured exercise programs in addiction. I think it's gonna find that we get better retention and treatment, and I think we're gonna find that we get subjective improvements in quality of life. You don't have to be a nurse, you don't have to be a doctor, you can be anybody and you can show up and help. All right, everybody, thanks for coming. We'll see you next Saturday. It's the group ride. Addiction affects one in five people at least. We're losing people and that's just not acceptable. We don't let that happen for other disease states. We do everything we can. We hospitalize them, we give them surgery, we give them chemotherapy, and I don't see that happening all the time with opioid addiction. Instead, we see a lot of judgment, we see stigma. People with addiction do not want this disease. You just have to ask someone and they'll tell you that. When they say, would you take it back? I wouldn't take back that experience. I would take back the pain that I've caused my children, absolutely, right? The people that got hurt, but that experience has been so valuable for me because now I get to stand today as somebody who knows what's in their soul. I'm everything that I've overcame because today I get to be honest about it. Today I get to be real about it. Today I get to be somebody that stands with integrity, right? Because I'm still standing.